Hi everyone, I'm Doris Lee and I'm the product manager at Snowflake. In this video, we'll walk you through how you can set up and use Git integration to version control your work in Snowflake. With Snowflake's new Git integration feature, you can connect your remote Git repository with Snowflake so that files from this repo is synced to a special type of stage called the repository stage. The repository stage acts as a local Git repository with a full clone of the remote repository. This allows you to work with the files in your repo in Snowflake and keep your work in sync with your Git repo for better collaboration and version control. In this video, we'll show you how you can create a remote Git repository, create a personal access token in Git as a secret, configure Git integration in Snowflake, connect to the remote Git repository, create a notebook based on the content in your Git repository, and finally, pull and commit changes to your Git repository. Our video today will be pretty comprehensive, so feel free to use the chapter sections in the video progress bar to skip ahead or rewind to sections that you're interested in. And again, all the code examples that I'll be showing today are available at our notebook demo GitHub repo for you to follow along, so be sure to check out that link below. And with that, let's dive right in. Okay, so here I'm logged into my personal GitHub account, and I'm on this page, which is the Snowflake Demo Notebooks repo. Uh, this repo contains a lot of our uh, Snowflake notebook demos, example notebooks. And so uh, for the purpose of this demo, what we're going to do is we are going to build a fork of this demo notebook repo. I'm going to create this fork uh, so that we can show how you can push to this repository um, because the main uh, repo is not, uh, we don't have pushing rights to that. So we're just going to create a fork here. And so now you can see I've created a fork of the Snowflake Demo Notebooks repo. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a secret. So next, I'm going to create a personal access token on GitHub so that I can use that personal access token as a secret to authenticate uh, to Snowflake. So in order to create a personal access token, you can go to the top right hand side and then go under your settings. And then once you're in the settings page, scroll down on the left hand side, you'll see a developer settings. And then on the left here, you'll see personal access token. And you have two options here. One is a, a, a fine grain token, which GitHub recommends. And then there's also the classic token. So we're going to go with what GitHub recommends, but both approaches should work uh, with uh, your Git integration. So with that, I'm going to generate a new token. I'm going to call this uh, token Snowflake GitHub token. And it's a, it's a valid name. I'm going to set the expiration date as 30 days. Um, maybe add some description. Uh, uh, personal access token to for Snowflake Git integration. And then I'm the resource owner. I'm going to change this repo access to all the repository that I have access to. And then in terms of permission, you can select the ones that you want. Uh, but in order to uh, commit to the repository, you at least need the contents and commit statuses. Um, so commit statuses, I'm going to set that as read and write, content, read and write. So that's at least the minimum that you would need um, uh, for this. And in fact, you might not even need the commit status. You actually only need the contents um, read and write here. Um, and so I can set all of these other ones as no access. Um, just going to review that this is the content read and write access. And then I'm going to generate this token. And you will see that I have my token here. Uh, it's redacted here, but um, you should see a very similar sort of token here, and you can click on here to copy it uh, to your clipboard. Uh, make sure you do copy this because this is only shown once, and then it'll disappear uh, the next time you come back to this page. Now that you've created a GitHub personal access token, you can go back to SnowSite, log in, and then open a new worksheet. And you can copy this, these two SQL commands in your worksheets. Uh, the first command, essentially, uh, what it's doing here is it's creating a GitHub uh, secret. And then the second command is creating an API integration with GitHub. I'm going to replace this with my username. 
And then this is my personal access token. Again, paste in your own personal access token here. And then you can leave this unchanged. This is essentially doing, um, uh, creating a GitHub API integration to uh, github.com. And so I'm going to run these two commands. First, creating the secret. Name of the secret is called this. And then I'm also going to create uh, an API integration. Okay, so now I've successfully created a GitHub secret as well as a API integration. So the next thing that I can do um, is I can uh, go into the object explorer. I'm going to take a look at my data. Uh, I have this schema that I'm working with called my GitHub action schema. And I'm going to click on the schema, go into public. And then once you're inside the schema, you should be able to see this new Git repository as one of the tabs here. I'm going to click on that. And you can see that I already have one Git repo that is linked to the schema. So in order to create a new Git repository, um, I'm going to go to the top right hand side, click on create and then click on Git repository. And then I'm going to give uh, the Git repository a name. I'm going to call it notebook Git example. And I'm going to copy in the URL of the remote repo. Uh, in this case, it's the fork that I'm working with. Uh, remember that if you created your own fork, make sure that you replace this with your own GitHub username. And then I'm going to add the API integration that I created in my worksheet earlier. If you recall, it was called a Git API integration example. So you don't need to do the authentication part if your repo is a public repo um, or if you're not planning to push anything to that public repo. But in this case, because we want to show uh, that you can commit to the repo, I'm going to actually go ahead and add my secret. And you remember that um, in the uh, worksheet earlier, I already created the secret. Uh, and the name of that secret was git secret example. Um, and you can see here that I also we also have a UI for you to create the secret, but uh, I already did it in the worksheet um, with SQL, so this is all good. So uh, after all this stuff, I'm going to show you what the SQL query looks like. So you can... Uh, pretty much do the same thing that I'm doing here with the UI, but uh, with SQL. Uh, but here, I'm just going to go through the UI and go ahead and click Create. Uh, so this is going to go ahead and create the Git repository. You can see that this Git repository has now been successfully created. Um, and you can also see all these folders that is replicating the content that I have from the remote repository. So this is an exact kind of clone of what we have with um, the remote oh, repo. And then you can explore your files. So let's say I want to look for all the files um, that are .sql files. See both of them here. A, a nice thing that we have with this file explorer view is that you can go ahead and like, you can click on this and then uh, you could do execute immediate to run this SQL script. So this is a SQL script that, I, that template that we used to create the secret and the integration and things like that. Um, so if you select the warehouse, you can actually run this script. I'm not going to do that here. Um, you can also copy this uh, into a worksheet, which is kind of nice because oftentimes you might have SQL scripts that you want to just like copy and paste it in. The other thing that you can do is copy the path or download this file. Um, and then you can do search, right? So maybe I can look at, uh, you know, .py files. And so this is an easy way uh, that you can use to kind of explore the files that you have in your Git repository. The next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to back to GitHub to our remote Git repo. Uh, and we're going to actually create uh, a new branch for all of our development work. So I'm going to go click on branches, view all branches, and I'm going to add a new branch. I'm going to call it development and create new branch. So I now have this new branch called development. So far, there's no other changes. It looks exactly like the main. If we go back to our Git repository, I can now uh, remember that there was no other branch branches. I should be able to fetch these changes and then see that I have this new branch called uh, development. So now you can see that I have this new branch called development. 
And this is the branch uh, in which we're going to create a notebook and operate on this branch uh, and commit back some of these changes to the development branch. Let's go back to the projects uh, and notebooks list. Okay, so in order to create a, a new notebook, I can go to the top right hand side, there's this plus notebook button. And then we also have this drop down, which gives me the option to create a new notebook based on the content in my Git repository. So I'm going to click this create from repository option. And then I can go to this file location in repo and essentially select my Git, uh, uh, Git example. This is my Git repo. I've selected this Git repo, which you can see this is the same file explorer that we saw earlier. I'm going to navigate down to a folder. Uh, with my Git example notebook called working with Git. And then I uh, forgot to change uh, this branch. Remember we created a development branch. And so that is the, the branch that we're going to be working on. And so I'm going to switch to development branch again, go into working with Git and then click on this IPYMB file and uh, select file. That's going to be the IPYMB file uh, that we're going to be working with. I'm going to give this notebook a name working with git and I'm going to change the warehouse to this one and I'm going to cr press create and so this is going to create a new notebook uh, that is backed by the content in my git repository and so um, when I have this new notebook open I wanted to, uh, to show you kind of the left hand side so the left hand side shows that I have this IPYMB file but in addition, I also have other files that is part of that folder. So I have an environment.yaml file, which specifies the packages that I'm going to be using. And then also .sql script, uh, which is the template that we saw earlier, which uh, helps us create the secret and the Git integration. And then um, you can uh, retrieve the latest changes from your remote branch by pulling the changes in. And then this also shows you which branch uh, we're developing on. Uh, so I, uh, with that, I'm going to just pull that aside so that we could see what's going on with this notebook. I'm going to start the notebook session. This example is trying to demonstrate a use case where, you know, you might be doing some prototyping or development work with your data team. And then eventually you have to move this data workload to production to work on larger data sets. And Git integration is really useful for that because you know, you might be working with other team members and being able to version control your code is really helpful as you're making changes to your notebook. So we have a very simple data pipeline. It just has one query and it involves the TPCH data. And so you can see that here I have a parameter. Uh, the mode uh, variable can take two values, which is dev or prod. And with dev, um, we're essentially creating an extra small warehouse and then working on a data the TBCH data that is a uh, scale factor of one. With the prod parameter, we are using a large warehouse and then working on data that it has scale factor of about a hundred. So this data is a hundred times the one that you're using for dev. So we're going to run that. Everything is going to be in dev. And so we're going to create a warehouse with uh, the extra small warehouse for dev. Um, we're going to use that warehouse and then uh, use the smaller scale factor uh, data. And then we're going to do a count to show that there is around 6 million records in this line item table. And then finally, we're going to run some query. So this is just a sample query on the TPCH data set. And then you can see the result of that query. Now I can also use cell referencing to actually get the, uh, the history and the details of that query that we ran. So, um, this essentially gives me the detail of this query. It has information about the query ID, username, warehouse, and, and all of that good stuff. And so finally, what we're going to do is we're going to use streamlit to print out a report of my, um, development run. So you can see the timestamp, the database, and the schema that I'm working with, and then this extra small warehouse I'm using for development, and then the query, and then finally the runtime information for that query.
Okay, now that I'm able to run through the entire notebook, I'm going to go back up to my query. I'm going to make some changes to this query. Uh, in particular, I'm going to take out this where clause, which means that this query will now be running on the entire uh, data set instead of just the filtered uh, ones. So I'm going to uh, click run all, which will run through the entire notebook. And let's go down to the run report to look at uh, the latest results. So again, this is a dev run. Um, we can see that the where clause is removed from the query. And then because the where clause is uh, removed, um, the total time that it takes to run the query is higher because the data set is now bigger. So this is our development notebook. And so let's say that uh, I finished developing my code and I want to push these changes uh, to Git so that my teammates can also see the changes that I've done. You can see that my IPYMB file shows up as being modified because we've made some changes. And then I'm going to say that the uh, commit is uh, removing where clause. I'm going to click on credentials. This law looks fine. Um, I'm going to put in my personal access token, and I'm going to push these changes uh, up to GitHub. And now that I've successfully committed these changes to the development branch, I'm going to go back uh, here. I'm going to refresh this page. I'm on the development branch. You can see that I made a push just 13 seconds ago. The changes that I made is essentially uh, removing the where clause. Uh, I can click into this, uh, click on to uh, this, and then see um, the changes that has been done here. So the where clause has been removed. Now that we've finished with the development of our notebook, uh, I switched to a different account uh, called my prod account uh, for productionizing this notebook. And so I, I've, I did the same setup on this account and then created a new notebook called working with Git with the same method that I showed earlier. The only difference here is I added a title prod here so that it indicates that this is on the production account. And so you can see here that this copy of the notebook still has the outdated query, which has the where clause. And so I'm just going to pull from my remote repository so that the latest changes uh, from my dev account is uh, pulled into here. So I did pull and then the sync has been successful. And you now see that the where clause, which is the change that I committed, has been removed. So this is the freshest copy that is in sync with my remote Git repository. So with that, I can then go up here and then I'm going to change this to prod um, so that I'm running this in production um, on the larger warehouse and data set. And then I'm going to click run all. And this is going to then run through, you know, create the larger warehouse, uh, use the larger data set. So I'm creating the warehouse. I'm using the larger TPCH SF100 data set. Um, you can see here that the line items table, instead of 6 million rec records that we saw earlier, uh, now we have 600 million uh, records. And then uh, we're running through the same query. Again, the where class has been uh, removed because of the commits that we did earlier. And if we scroll down, we should see the full prod report, the query, and then the runtime information. Again, the runtime information is higher because the data that we're working with is much larger in this case. So this is how you can seamlessly go between the production account that you have, which can be even a completely different person on your data team, different account for production purposes, and then easily kind of push those changes to a remote Git repository. And then um, you, know, you have a separate account for doing uh, your development. In this demo, we took a look at how you can seamlessly connect your Git repository with Snowflake's repository stage, enabling efficient version control and collaboration. As a reminder, you can find all the code example from today's demo on our GitHub repository link below. And stay tuned for more tips and tutorials from Snowflake by checking out the playlist below. See you next time.